Now, some telling arguments have emerged at the hearing so far. Small retailers say township spaza shops are disappearing as big retail players are taking maximum market share. The big four retailers remove millions in profit out of the townships, money which should or could otherwise stay in circulation. And retailing in South Africa is about the ability to, to be price competitive, something which the small players are struggling with. And consumers now prefer going to the mall, which offers a one-stop shop. However, the big grocery retailers deny anti-competitive behavior in their exclusive long-term lease agreements. Pick and Pay says its exclusive lease agreements uh, do not affect small informal businesses. In a number of cases, Pick and Pay says it relaxes exclusivity arrangements to facilitate market entry of certain small businesses. However, MassMart says in its experience, Pick and Pay has not been willing to relax exclusivity, and on the contrary, Pick and Pay has actively sought to legally enforce exclusivity when entrance is likely to pose a material constraint. And Spa Group, like Pick and Pay, submits that there's no evidence to suggest exclusive leases negatively affect entrance in rural shopping centers. Spa also says perceived restrictions on independent retailers are not inhibiting their market entry or growth. And finally, Woolworths denies allegations of not showing interest in complying with the Consumer Goods Code of Conduct. The retailer says the Consumer Goods and Services Ombudsman has never had to investigate and resolve a complaint against Woolworths. And joining us live in studio is Zama Gampi. He's the secretary of Buy Black SA, and you at home are most welcome to engage us. Good evening to you, Mr. Gampi. Uh, good to have you in person. Mm -hmm. Just looking at the latest developments with the Competition Commission taking submissions on a smaller players in the sector, it's, it, it is a mammoth task because of the historic entrenchment that these companies have enjoyed. So how do you even begin eating this uh, elephant when... when even bite sizes haven't been effective over the years. Good evening, uh, Cindy, and to all our viewers. This is a serious cause for concern, because if you look at it, we are driving township revitalization in many of the provinces. And then how do you address township revitalization, whereas at one end, uh, you have got the challenges where our spaza shops and our hawkers, we grew up and were what we are today they are dying a natural death all the time. So um, it is not a trend which has started right now. It is a trend which has been there over some time. Maybe just if I can remind you, you remember the story of Pioneer Foods, um, which were fined one billion in terms of competitions commission and were going to lay about 2,000 staff some years back. And you'll find that uh, we came in and intervened as by black and we made sure that those 2,000 staff were not uh, uh, lay off. Mm -hmm. But then this trend, especially in the, in the milling industry, it continues. You remember the same thing it was done by uh, uh, Premier Foods, the same thing it was done by Tiger Brands, and it continued. And it went to the banks, the same thing it happens to the banks. You remember the story of APSA? Uh, it, went, it went also to the construction company. But the point I'm trying to say is that we need to find a way when we were saying that there is a shopping center which is being opened in a, in a township. We need to find a way that those puzzle shops and hawkers should be involved in that. Hmm. But, but again, I mean, what does the Competition, com uh, competition Commission do beyond what legally they, they, they are permitted to do, i.e. imposing lenient fines of about 10% of uh, the, the yearly turnover uh, to compel these businesses to transform? Because as you rightly say, it's in the entire value chain that has been compromised uh, and that, that colludes. True. Um, remember that they, they, they have got that task, they, they are able to do that. But one of the things which we need to, to enforce, we need to enforce now that whenever the Competition Commission has charged a penalty against this colluding, collusion, and then one of the things we need to look at, we need to look in terms of the, how do we monitor and make sure that this is done. One, one, of, one of the things maybe we might look at, we might look at then to creating a fund where these funds which are being paid by these colluders is being invested. Some of the things, you, you, you see we have got the Women's Fund, 
But maybe that funds, we must use it to create a culture of entrepreneurship in the country and give it to some young people to start their own businesses. Yeah, but it also the, the consumer has a choice where you can go to a shopping mall, it's a one-stop shop, and the spaza shops are failing to, to be competitive and offer a variety of goods and services. So where, where then now do we strike that balance for a level of patriotism, if you will, of those in the township to try and keep the money circulating within their communities before it's extracted to, to, to other economies? I'll make an example with you. Uh, the blue label, uh, which is the bigger in terms of telecommunication, airtime and all those things. When they're buying cell C, one of the things we, we did, we went to them. And we said, the Blue Label, you are buying Cell C, and then you are going to be owning, I think, certain percent, about 45% of Cell C. But how are you going to make sure that this doesn't benefit only the bigger shops? What is going to happen to this Spaza in Soweto and all over the country? So we reached an agreement where we, we said that uh, supply the small hawkers and Spaza shops with a machine, which includes your a time machine, which includes your lotto, which includes uh, your traffic fines, which include paying off uh, your DSTV and all those things. So that eventually, as you have got the, this uh, uh, sale, small entities are benefiting from the spaza shops. Imagine if you can do the same thing then um, to all the different uh, shops. You said you're building a shopping mall here, yeah? but a certain portion of this, maybe 10% of the shopping mall, uh, proceeds, it must go to the small local community shops. But this is not inf information that's necessarily in the public domain where we, you will know what the town special, uh, spatial planning is going to be in the next five years or so. Are you saying that even the smaller play players, particularly uh, black uh, um, entrepreneurs, need to be aware or investigate where the next development is going to be as opposed to be cry at the development once it's done? Remember that in many uh, townships, now we've got Chamber of Commerce, which are feeding information to many um, shops. For example, if you go to Soweto, there's, good, there's Soweto Chamber of Commerce, and then there's NAFCO, there's a variety of them. There's Buy Black, I mean there's Black Business Council, which are feeding information, which are doing some good uh, workshops. There's DTI also, which is involved and giving some uh, small SMM is some information. Okay, let's take a call. Uh, and you at home are welcome to join in 011-542-2186, looking at how we can create a more equal uh, environment when it comes to the retail sector. Norman in Pretoria, good evening to you. Welcome. Hi, ma'am. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Fine. Uh, the topic for today is very close to my heart. Uh, I grew up in the sector of leasing, small business, small spaces. And... Uh, We've been washed away by growth of uh, same chain stores that move into our townships. But the sad thing also is that we've been proposing to government, especially under PIC, where we could own sectional title deeds uh, into these retail shops, that even if you pass on, your kids, your wife, your family can remain with something. I mean, you go to a complex, you stay for 20 years, but you've got nothing to show for it. Uh, I think government needs to really look at those things of sectional title deed that we can make loans, we can grow, we can leave something for our families. Norman, please, yeah, yeah, and just stay listening as well because I know a Buy Black SA has got a number, a list of cases that they, that they are pursuing in the interest of uh, creating a conducive environment for smaller players to play in as well. He is talking about legacy, something that a good inheritance that you can give to your children. So in the current state of a very, uh, the, the inequality or, you know, the, the, the the, the, the fact that the economy is not transforming, how do we assist a Norman to be able to achieve his desire as a parent to leave something for his children? Yes, we have done it in various sectors. You remember um, the, the example I've mentioned with, with Pioneer Feud. What we have said, we said the whole value chain, which was benefiting 90% uh, white monopolies, it must change. Things like your sugar, your wheat, your security, and cleaning. Blacks were not involved in those things. So one of the things then we propose, we propose to them, they must transform. So the value chain, whenever they're making any bread, that value chain, they must get it from the SMMEs in the local one. Same applies in the insurance industry. 
I mean, you have seen two weeks back we block um, that in Deben. The chain. Because what we're saying, we're saying that insurance companies, they are, most of their clients are black. But when it comes to value chain, from towing your car and then from uh, taking the car to the panel beating, all that value chain is not benefiting black. And we need to do something about that. And then you can look also in companies retrenching. Many companies, when they're retrenching, it's scary. You find that someone is just laid off uh, because of cut costing. But you find that that, at the end of the day, it affects the family. So one of the things we're saying, there should be a retrenching business support to many companies who are retrenched. Before they retrench, we must take care of the people who are going to be laid off. Mm. So that's what Pay Black stands for. And then we want to do that cut across in banks, we want to do cut across. If, if, I mean, we have got means to set up our own cooperative banks in the country and compete with the, uh, uh, with your uh, commercial banks. Mm. Yeah. Now, let's just take a call. Lucas in Soweto, thanks for your patience. Good evening to you. Hello. Hi. Yes, my name is Lucas, and I'm just listening to your program. I've got a, a, a concern about this because when you look at the whole thing, uh, our black government opened the doors for the for the white monopoly to operate in the location with the malls, forgetting that they are uh, a small players which are operating the spaza shops, which are now dead today. Mm. Lucas, are, are, yeah, are you saying that you know that we can't do much about the shopping centres? I mean that they're legally there. Uh, so, what is your proposal in in the cohabiting of these two uh, sectors? Well, my proposal as an old man who grew up in Johannesburg, I, well, what I know from the old regime, any white man who comes in the location to operate the business, they are just 51 and 49 percent. But this open door policy that opened, gives the whites a privilege to open the big company, uh, the big malls around the locations. And today we are faced with African people like uh, this uh, black Indians. They operate in spaza shops. Our local people are dying today and every day. They can't move. All right. So I think point taken. Problem, thanks yeah. thanks so, so, so much, uh, Lucas. Uh, let's invite now Lula Mamdanga from the Competition Commission as uh, the panel chairperson. Good evening to you and thanks so much for your time. Just in assisting Lucas in saying that the legislation is so lax. It does allow uh, the for, for big business and even foreigners, if you will, uh, to take advantage of business opportunities at, 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 the, at the demise of uh, black people. Um, I would say that the uh, legislation is, is, is so lax. It, 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 I think it's a function of many things. It could be a function of enforcement, poor enforcement um, uh, by authorities that are in charge with, um, uh, uh, with regulating different aspects uh, of, of, this, of, of the retail business. At this point, we have not come to any conclusion as to where the eel is coming from and, and, and where the concern is coming from. But what is uh, uh, very clear from what has come out is that there is a need for a, a proper regulation and, 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 and a uniform regulation, that is regulations that apply, for example, to both local and foreign national owned businesses, as well as just regulating how, um, how, how, how business op businesses operate in the township. Mm. But, but then, I mean, you know, with the Competition Commission being a very uh, material stakeholder to ensure that there is uh, at least a level of fairness in the industry, uh, we, we're not necessarily seeing any uh, uh, behavioral adjustment from the monopoly businesses, you know, a small fine here and there. It's even worked into their, 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 their financials. So how much more effective can, can the Competition Commission be to, to uh, compel transformation in these sectors? Um, the, com the Competition Commission is, is governed uh, by the Act and, is, uh, and therefore is a, is a, is a creature of, uh, of a statute, is a, a, a statutory creature. As such, uh, there are parameters uh, within which they can do things. Um, uh, if you're asking if have they done uh, what they should do within the parameters of the current, uh, uh, of, the, of the four corners of the Competition Act as it applies, I would say yes. Um, you know, the, uh, the Commission has to first identify a violation and then initiate an investigation, for example. Mm. Um, and then 
um, they cannot just find, um, uh, they cannot just conclude, if they, they cannot decide that they don't like something and therefore find a party. It has to be a violation as, um, as, as, as stipulated or as contemplated by the Competition Act. That's yep. the no, 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 please stay on the line. We have Mbali and Ekurleni and Linda and Gauteng. Hello to you, uh, Ali. Um, I beg your pardon. Ali and Ekurleni, hello to you. Uh, good day. I, good day. I want to... Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. I just want to be quick because some of the callers have already mentioned what I wanted to say. We must look it at both ways because the presence of the malls in the township is bringing development and is making it more convenient for the local residents. However, there must be a quota that is set for such giant companies that at least allocate 20% of your space for the local business guys who must pay less than your normal uh, big companies. On the other hand, just before I go, the people we are talking for, our our business guys, your father shop, they must also improve the services because more often than not, the services of black business is not up to threat. And we must not forget that the, the foreigners operating tax shops as well are also accessibility the, the, the problem. That's all I wanted to say. All right, Ali, much appreciate it. Linda, in Gauteng, you'll be our last call on this. Hello to you. Uh, hello. Yes, yes my, my name is Linda Madida. I'm the president of Gauteng Liquor Forum. I want to hold you in the problem we're having, we as liquor traders, because we've got a complaint against the town planning of the local municipality, whereby they just give these retailers free riding, whilst when we apply, we've got the problem. They say we mustn't apply when there's 500 meters radius between a uh, local trade, tra uh, trading store. But they do, with them, they don't care. We have pick and pay this side and check us the other side. We have spa the other side, you have check us the other side. They don't care about them. They don't apply the 500 meters. And the other thing, they say, we mustn't apply next to the bus stop or taxi rank or a rank. So to them, the malls, how many malls are next to the taxi rank? So we, say, we are saying the town training must come fair, must be clean and treat everybody fair. All right, Linda, thanks so much. I hope you made your submissions to the Competition Commission. Just your response, uh, Lulama, very briefly to the concerns our callers uh, have raised and how far the Competition Commission can uh, also intervene in, uh, with regards to the town planning and the restrictions that that poses for primarily black enterprises or entrepreneurs. Um, um, we, um, I've, I'm very reluctant to, to proffer any views or any views on what should happen, but I can tell you what could happen because it, we are in the early stages of, of, of the inquiry. Um, I, I, I had the first caller what he said, for example, which is a proposal on the on, on the kind of recommendations and the kind of uh, kind of outcome that they would like to see. Uh, however, I'm not sure. I doubt very much if they've made any submission to the uh, to, to the inquiry. For example, we, we cannot make outcomes uh, based on um, uh, just based on statements. Mm. It, it, we, we actually have to interrogate interrogate some of the concerns. And and and, and you know, when you're coming up with a with a with a with a with a with a, uh, with a remedy, it must be a remedy that's proportionate proportionate to what is. Uh, 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 the, 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 the harm in the first place. Mm -hmm. So we have to look at both uh, at all those aspects. The township concerned, the businesses affected. But um, uh, I'm happy to see that uh, there are people that uh, are out there thinking about what could be solutions uh, to the problem. And those solutions we welcome. We welcome. However, it must be understood that we have to weigh both the harm. And the solution, and and, and 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 not have a solution that just mm. sticks to yeah. So 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 there's a, still another opportunity for people to make submissions tomorrow. Is oh, that an invitation? Uh, absolutely, absolutely. They can they can come tomorrow. Um, we have we are continuing with the hearings in Pretoria tomorrow. That's our last day at the Manhattan Hotel, um, and uh, and then we'll then and then on Thursday we'll proceed. Uh, at, uh, at at the uh, Pantone Hotel in Black, in, in Blancfontein. 
All right, uh, so you... Thursday and Friday, sorry, yes. So they, they still have plenty of, I mean, three days to make those submissions. And we would welcome any any person, any any party, whoever, a, a, a consumer, anyone. Who, uh, what, Just uh, give us the venue again in Joba, please, uh, Lolama. It's the Pactonian Hotel in Bramfontein. Okay, got you. Thanks so that's much. For, that's for Thursday and Friday. All right, Thursday and Friday, if you're in and around Joburg at the Pactonian Hotel in Bramfontein, and Ulama Mtanga, Competition Commission Panel Chairperson, uh, extending an inv inv invitation to do so. Because we can sit around and complain about mm -hmm. what the challenges are, but we also need to be solution-driven. The one uh, caller uh, saying, Ali saying that at the end of the day, it is about the convenience and uh, the access that the consumer has. The consumer has the right to have excellent service. And then in the same breath is how, how do we preserve what has already essentially been uh, an industry that has been deteriorating over the years in spaza shops? Yeah. Uh, if you look at it, um, Cindy, the, the Competition Commission Act, as well as B Act, state clearly that it is an unlawful agreement between competitors to fix prices, uh, between competitors and, and share market, market territory and share customers. And that's what Lola Ma was saying just now. <laughs> but also, uh, I just want to make an example. You go to Venda in Chakuma, and then there are some, uh, that's the same things happening also in Maple Hall. There are some mothers there who are selling fruits and veg there um, throughout um, the day and night. And then they sell that fruit and veg for 20 rand. And then out of that 20 rand, you know that they don't even take less than two rand per bag. Part of the money it is going to mm. a farmer which is farming there so imagine if someone has sold a uh, 20 bags that is two run multiplied by 20 40 rand a day which they are making okay so that, i'm, I'm sorry we, we, we're out of time any yes. contact details where can our viewers get a hold of you if they want to uh, join on some of the campaigns that you're running our hotline number is 082 mm -hmm. 977 mm -hmm. 1370 and then they can also check on our website www.buyblacksa.org.za. Uh, All right, excellent. Thank, thank you so much. So that is uh, buyblacksa.org.za. Okay, and the hotline number 0829771370. 0829771370. If you'd like to join in the Buy Black SA campaign. And we hope that uh, you'll give us feedback in terms of your success or even challenges. Thanks indeed for watching and thanks for calling in to our guests. We had Zama Gampi, he's the secretary of the Buy Black SA. And we had uh, Lulama, the, uh, Lulama um, Tanga from the Competition Commission, the uh, panel's chairperson. Thanks indeed for watching. We're back after this.